Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to Direwolf20. Um, so I do apologize that there was not a video in the past weekend. I ended up, you know, I went and got the new puppy, and I was working with him, potty training, and trying to get him used to the whole situation, get him used to the rabbit as best I can. That's still very much a work in progress. Um, but he is, he is potty trained now. No accidents. <laughs> so, you know, he had like two um since i got him but that was it i mean he's picked up on it really really quick he goes to the door he whines he lets me know when he wants to go out all in the process of like 24 hours which is great and he only chews up his toys and stuff like he is very very well behaved good natured dog really really sweet he's looking at me right now uh, <laughs> he knows i'm talking about him but anyways i did do a bit of work through here um i kind of cleaned up our rf tools area um, so we have all of our stuff right here. Uh, this is, of course, the pieces from the dimlet parcels. And then right here I have one set up so we can store dimlets. If we create dimlets that we don't end up using, then we can store them here and, uh, you know, have access to them. Now, in addition, I did set up a quarry, RF Tools quarry. We've covered how to do those in the past. But I did set one up in that dimension that we made. Um, whoops. That's not running right now because I disconnected the power um from it and everything but basically i just had a chunk loading ward over here and uh, the builder block and then basically feeding into a quarry and it quarried out this whole section here and then this section over here which i think is probably enough dimensional shards i may plug the power back up here in just a minute um <clears throat> so that that'll be running but i did i did run that through so that we could kind of uh get a few of those dimensional shards that we had mentioned last episode because we're going to be needing those today but if you take a look in here we have 358 dimensional shards um, as of right now to kind of help us get started now for some reason these it drives me insane that these conversion monitors never show like just they'll pick certain things and just refuse to show it so anyhow um, I also went through and did a little bit of cleanup work around the garden areas um, you can see I took out the lanterns, I redid all the lighting. Oh, I didn't need to get rid of these. I totally forgot about the corners. That's fine. It won't take but a second. And I, honestly, I think I may put a light like right in here because I feel like that's a little bit dark. And then I also cleaned up the top lighting so there's no torches up here. Um, I wanted to, to kind of start out here and work on this, add some flowers, that kind of thing, uh, before moving on inside. I did do a little bit of work. It was like in the machine building, I think. Um, just lighting some of that up as well. But anyways, I mean, I think it's a, it's a bit cleaner over here and looks a little bit better. Um, and I did a lot of miscellaneous work. I sped up the XP system and I tried to get it just right. Um, I ended up throwing 15 speed upgrades into this. And it's not running. Yeah, you can see, like, I think we're out of solidified XP. I'm fairly sure. Yeah, we are out of solidified XP. So, using all of that, we now have 783 levels within this experience obelisk, which is great. I mean, that's that's a fair amount of XP. Um, probably more than we're going to use <laughs> for the rest of this series. Um, so, anyways, that's running. Um, basically, I just, I just sped it up a little bit to get through all that experience now really doesn't matter also I expanded on our solar panels a bit and have this connected in um, so if we take a look right here you can see that we are inputting about 17,000 RF per tick right now um, and the Sun is actually it looks like it's about hundred percent efficiency it is but each of these are producing 5600 so not bad not too bad. I'm still trying to figure out exactly how I want to go with this because I can bring this out, but then I'd still have a lot of space, so I could bring it out again, make it a little bit bigger, but I don't know if I want to, if I want to make it feel cluttered up there or not. So I'm still kind of working through that whole that whole thing. So we shall see. This is probably mob spawnable. It is. I don't care. I'll get that cleaned up soon. So anyways, today we are going to be working on RF tools. Um, and the first thing that I want to do is I want to work on some machine infusion. 
And of course, to do this, the first thing that we are going to need is the machine infuser. Um, this requires dimensional shards, diamond, and machine frame. Not terribly expensive. Now, you can actually infuse the machine infuser. Um, but of course, to do that, you're going to have to make two of them. And that is exactly what we are going to do today. Let's go ahead and get like two machine frames, and then we are going to get our machine infuser. We're going to get two of those. And then I'm also going to want a bit of dimensional shards. And it, honestly, infusing machines, very, very simple process. Um, but you do have to get some of those dimensional shards to get it going. Now, you can actually, in a lot of cases, I haven't found any in this pack. But generally, there is a, there is a way that you can find dimensional shards, like in the nether or something like that. They are just extremely, extremely rare um, to find. But I haven't, like I said, I haven't personally found any, at least with my quarries and stuff running, I haven't found any <clears throat> uh, within this pack. So, just a heads up on that. I guess our machine infuser, we're going to put it right here, I think. And we'll go ahead and link up this power. Just like that. And like I said, you can infuse the machine infuser. And what we can do is we just throw in our dimensional shards, and you'll notice that it slowly eats through those, and the percent on the, say, machine infuser is going to rise. Now, as you can tell, it's actually going to require a lot of dimensional shards. It's about a stack for 25%, which is... <laughs> it's, going to take, it's going to take a fair few of these. Um, I don't know why I was thinking I had enough dimensional shards. It's not cheap, to say the least. Alright, we're just going to change this over because we are going to have to do a bit more quarrying. Uh, it, would, it would seem... So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say... Whoops. We'll start it, like, right here. And it'll go down to, like, say, this area right here. Okay. And we'll go ahead and get this thing started. Basically, I'm just quarrying out the entire island, more or less, you know. Um, so we'll throw that in there, and restart the redstone signal, and it should start digging for us. There it is. By the way, the card I'm using is a Clearing Fortune Quarry. So it does require a little bit more power, but power is not really too much of a concern for us at the moment. Um, and it's not terribly expensive. Once you have dimensional shards, you can make this uh, fairly easy. So anyways, now that that's running... Let's go ahead and I guess we'll head back and continue infusing. It will pick up dimensional shards fairly quickly. Because, I mean, that quarry runs like super fast. And with the fortune and everything, shouldn't be too much of a problem. I probably should have started with something like the um, Dimension Builder, possibly. But uh, I didn't. Okay, so this, the Machine Infuser, is about to be at max. Okay. Uh, max Infusion, which will drastically reduce the amount of power that it consumes and I believe that's really all it does for the machine infuser but I figured eh why not this is something that we're going to be using a bit realistically okay so now if I throw more dimensional shards in here you'll notice it will not use those because it is now 100% done so we'll go ahead and grab that we'll set down our 100% infused machine infuser and we'll go ahead and just dump this one in the system because we really don't need it anymore at this point and machine infusion is something that I'd like to keep up on and keep things, you know, try to keep everything maxed out fairly quickly. Like once we get enough of these built up, I would like to have this running. Um, we will probably later on in the very near future, we're going to make a dimension that's dedicated just to um, getting dimensional shards, hopefully. So we shall see. So anyways, moving on. Um, one of my major goals today is, of course, to get a dragon dimension. And by the time we get this all set up, this will have enough um, dimensional shards to finish this out. We're about to be at 50%. So if we take a look here at the oops, Ender Dragon, this is what we're going to need. It's going to be a Rarity 6, okay? So we're going to need to switch out this Dimlet Control Circuit and grab our Rarity 6. We do have one of those. They're not very common, so... Um, luckily we have plenty of Dimlet uh, Rarity 5s. I would 
probably the next dimension I'll make will be a dimensional shard dimension. And those do require a rarity of five, but we have plenty of those, so that's not too much of a concern. So we've got our rarity six. Let's go ahead, pull this back up, and then we are also going to need, looks like the advanced things, uh, this advanced memory unit. We'll need one of these, as well as the advanced energy module. And basically you can just look at the... Uh, you know the parts right there and you can say like okay that's advanced energy because it has the three lightning bolts we'll just go ahead and throw that into there um, and then the advanced memory unit and then the let's see I believe that's a mob type controller is what it's called yep dimlet mob type controller so we'll go ahead and throw that in there and then the only other thing that we need is that thing at the bottom right, which what that is, that is a syringe with an Ender Dragon's, um, I guess, blood in it, basically. So to make a syringe, we are just going to need a glass bottle and some iron. Let's go ahead and pop over to here. And we're going to get ourselves a few of these. I'm going to go ahead and grab, say, three, just, just so we've got them in the future. I'll probably end up setting up something for syringe storage. Um, and that way, if we want to, we can always make another Dragon Dimension fairly easily. Personally, I, I like having um, multiples, like as backup, I guess. And then the last thing that we're going to need is the End Crystal. We're going to need four of these, of course, to resummon the Ender Dragon. So we'll go ahead and make some glass panes. Of course, that would be the one thing that I don't have. So let's go ahead, drop these down, and we're going to have to, of course, resummon the Ender Dragon. Before we get started, let me grab my bow. Now we just need to... Yeah, I didn't get him. We have to go up and we have to smack him with the syringe itself. Now, I am probably... Okay, he's landing. Just kind of waiting until he landed. And you'll notice down there there's a little bit of red that fills this up. And now we have 100% essence. Now the Ender Dragon... The Ender Dragon does list as an unknown mob. It's not really... It should be fine, as long as the version of RF Tools is updated. I know some people have had issues with it. Oh yeah, I can't. Can't hurt it with the bow right now. Okay. But anyways, we got three syringes filled now, just in case. And they're all 100%. And that should be everything that we need to make our dimlet. So let me go ahead and finish him off and get that dragon heart, since he's about dead. Anyway. And we did get enough. Uh, dimensional shards to finish out this dimension builder so I'm gonna have that running uh, that's the the main one that I want maxed right now because you can see it does reduce power consumption faster dimension creation speed very very important in my opinion at least once you start getting into the higher cost dimensions and stuff which the dragon dimlet dimension is a little bit higher cost when you start getting into like high-end rarity and customization and stuff like that Alright, so now that we have that syringe, let's go ahead and throw it into the Dimlet workbench. And you can see that now we can get a mob Dimlet for the Ender Dragon. Alright, um, 900 ticks cost, or tick cost, um, creation cost 10,000 RF per tick, maintain cost is another 10,000 RF per tick. Basically we end up with, you know, 10,000 RF per tick being consumed by this Dimlet. So we'll go ahead and pull that out. Um... Now that we've got that, technically we could take and make a dimension with this. Since we can remove our dimlets anyway, let's go ahead and get ourselves an empty dimension tab. Because honestly, if, if we can get away without making a whole bunch of dimlets, that's fine by me. But if we need to, that's fine by me too. <laughs> so, it doesn't matter. Um, so, we've got an Ender Dragon. That's the only specification that we put saying that, you know, Ender Dragons, they can spawn in this dimension. 
So let's go ahead and store it. We have a Realize Dimension tab. Um, creation costs 11,000 RF per tick. Maintain cost 10,010 RF per tick. All right. So let's go ahead and grab our Dimension Builder. And this is the one that, of course, is fully infused. And we'll go ahead and throw this Realize Dimension tab into that. And you can see it's actually making, uh, it's actually generating this world at a fairly decent rate. Um, I am going to need to link power to this now that I think about it. There we go. And we'll check it out. If it's not something that we like, well, that's fine. We can jump out. We can break our uh, Dimension tab down and get a new one. All right, so it's filling the world with RF. Wonderful. And so what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead and dial this. Dragon Dimension with ID4. Let's dial it. And now we should be able to just jump right into this. I don't have a thing to return back, but that's okay. We're going to set this. Oops. We're going to make a new one. We're going to say this is the RF Tools Control Commit. And let's go ahead and pop through here real quick. Oh, I hear them. There they are. And you can see that we have Ender Dragons. Now, you'll notice that, I mean, there's no, like, health bars or anything like that. But they are taking damage. So, it's just hard to tell. This is actually a nice dimension. If it wasn't for the Ender Dragons right here. But after I kill this one, they should start to respawn. I think. There we go. There's two down. And so that'll be our second dragon heart. Okay, you can see another one just spawned up. There should be... I mean, you're not going to run out of ender dragons with this. Um... I think at most there's going to be like three spawn. That's what it should be. You shouldn't get any more than three, so it shouldn't get out of hand, really. Um, especially at this point, you know, whenever you get to get to this stage of the game, I mean, you're pretty much unkillable anyway, so. Now, they don't drop dragon hearts. I mean, dragon eggs, sorry. So if you're wanting dragon eggs, that's something... Yeah, another one just spawned up. That's something that you're going to have to do with the like standard ender dragon and all that but if you have the dragon hearts this works perfectly fine i've already gotten four really really quickly now over well somewhere over in here by the way the ender dragon should stay right around spawn so you should be pretty safe to run off um and they will just keep spawning you know you'll always have like two ender dragons to kill on now, in addition, we didn't get these in any of our other dimensions that we created, but I do want to show you these. These are um, RF Tools Dimension Buildings. And if you look inside of these, you can actually get those little things on the picture frames. Uh, we have a Sky Dimlet, Body Red Moon. We have a Material Dimlet, Glass. We have Shallow Ocean, Feature Dimlet. And then in addition, there's also some Machine or some dimlet parts here and a dimlet parcel. Basically, um, biome dimlet storage cell. You can get the randomized effects. These existed in 1.7, if you recall. Um, and basically, this is one way to get your dimlets and stuff without having to create them. So, you know, the way I showed you with the workbench, that's a precise way to do it. But uh, you can also do it this way and you know kind of have that random chance that you had in 1.7 sometimes you can get some pretty good stuff out of these as well but right now i'm not really having a whole lot of luck getting anything all that useful but that is okay anyways i'm going to head back to our rf tools control room that dragon dimension i'm happy with it um, now you could do something that's like void or something like that if you wanted to. You could do an end dragon dimension. There's all different kinds of options. Um, and of course you can make it a little bit more specified if you so desire. Um, which I think, 
I know I do want to get into a more specified dimension. So maybe next episode we may make our dimensional shard dimension. Um, which shouldn't take all that long. I'll try to get everything prepped, you know, off camera. And then we will see about maybe creating one of those. Because when I do that dimension, I want to really go into detail specifying its conditions. It's going to be a little bit more expensive than our dragon dimension. The dragon dimension, I just want a place where I can go and kill ender dragons more than anything. Um, right there around spawn. Because we're going to need lots of dragon hearts for um, draconic evolution coming up. So, but before we finish out today's episode, the one thing that I do really, really want to get into is I want to get a better ranged weapon because I want to be able to go in there. I mean, right now it still takes a while to kill those ender dragons. Um, it's not something that I want to grind with presently. And so what we're going to be doing is we are going to go for a draconic bow. Um, I don't remember. Do we have, okay. It looks like I never made any draconic bow at all. Okay. So we're going to start with the wyvern bow. Now this does require a wyvern core and then wyvern energy cores. Let's go ahead. We'll get these real quick. There's wyvern energy. And then honestly we should be minus the bow. Okay. There's the bow of the wyvern. Awesome. And that's going to start charging up. I mean by default this bow is not all that great it's not bad it really isn't but um, you're not gonna get honestly this dark bow is probably higher damage than the wyvern bow realistically um, but we're gonna go ahead and upgrade to the draconic bow which does require a few things awakened cores draconic energy cores and then that awakened draconium I don't think that I have oh I do have awakened draconium okay okay so awakened draconium draconic energy cores let's get all this stuff together. I don't know. Draconic energy core. Now this stuff's terribly expensive. It's just these little things. Okay, so we're gonna need four wyvern cores for this. And then to get our awakened core, we just need five awakened draconium. Not a problem. And I do want to get this upgrade today as well. So we'll get into that in just a second um, and how upgrades and all that stuff works. Um, oh, you know what I need? I need a nether star. So while that's being created, let's go ahead and pop on over here. And I want to show you how the upgrade system works with Draconic Evolution because it is a whole lot different than it used to be. Um, so what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to take a look at this Bow of the Wyvern. And you can see that it has upgrade slots for RF capacity, arrow damage, arrow speed, and draw speed. Honestly, I'm probably going to want to upgrade all three, all four of those. So we are going to need to create um, these upgrade keys. Now the first one, the RF capacity, let's see, we're going to need Draconic Cores. There's 64 of those. Uh, Wyvern Energy Core. And then here is our upgrade key for RF capacity. Not too bad. Next up we have Arrow Damage. Also not too bad. None of these are terribly expensive, and you honestly, you only need one of these. Um, you don't need to make one of these every time that you apply an upgrade. You really just need a set of these to have, and then that's pretty much it. These are reusable and everything. And there is our arrow damage. Okay, now that we've got that, let me pop on over because this should be done. It is. And we'll go ahead and set the bow up to start being processed. We'll throw in our awakened core. We'll throw in, like, in Draconium, Draconic Energy Core. And there we go. It's creating our Draconic Bow for us now. All right, so now that that's in order, now we need to look here. You can see that, uh, what's the, okay, there we go, pause it. You can say there is a level basic, um, and this is true for all of the upgrades. They're all going to use the same thing. So for basic, for example, we are going to need golden apples, two of those, two diamonds, two eyes of ender, a draconic core, and then the upgrade key. So let me make a little shopping list here. And keep in mind, I'm going to do all four upgrades. So we're going to go ahead and say we're going to want eight golden apples. We're going to want eight diamonds, eight eyes of ender, 
and then we're going to want four draconic cores. Okay, and that is for just the very first tier as well. So after basic, then you have the wyvern level. And as you can see, I can look through all of these and they're all pretty well the same thing. Um, then lastly, we have, or lastly for right now, there is the chaotic level. We're not going to get into chaotic today because it's just too much uh, for us at the current moment. So basically, we have a lot of items that we have to get together for um, upgrading. And it's kind of kind of a little bit of a headache sometimes, but that's okay. So let's go ahead and get... Um, actually, I'm going to pop over here and we'll just get all this stuff together. So first up, let's get some golden apples. And like I said, we're going to want eight of these. And then let's get ourselves eight diamonds. And then eyes of ender. We're going to want eight of those. And then lastly, just draconic cores. We're going to want four of those. And we're going to go ahead and split these things up. And we're going to say, you know, here's four golden apples. Here's four golden apples. We're going to do the same with the Eyes of Ender. And again with the Draconic Cores. And then with the Diamonds. Okay. And we'll go ahead and throw our Draconic Bow in there. And then we can just apply, say, this Arrow Speed upgrade. We can just throw it in there. And it should start running here in just a second. There we go. So basically what's going to happen is it's going to run through. It's going to apply this upgrade to the bow. Um... It will take a little bit to run through all this stuff, especially if you're doing like multiple upgrades for each, you know, doing all four upgrades for the bow and stuff like that. It will take a little while. Now, while we're waiting, of course, we can get the rest of the stuff in together. So for the next tier, we're going to need, I'm going to go ahead and get, say, 16 nether stars because we're going to need eight for the next tier. And then let's get our... Eight Draconic Cores, Emerald, and then we're also going to need Wyvern Cores. Okay, so there's everything that we need for the next tier. Already in order. Anyways, I'm going to apply all these upgrades, because I've got to go through and make those Awakened Cores and stuff like that. Um, this is going to take a little while to do, so I will be back in a few minutes, once this stuff's all done running and all that. Um, and we will check this bow out. With all the upgrades and stuff on it. Alright, so our Draconic Bow is done. We have Tier 4 or Tier 3 on all the upgrades. We have Draconic Level RF Capacity, Draconic Level Arrow Storage, or Arrow Damage, Arrow Speed, Draw Speed, all that good stuff. You can see that we can now store up to 256 million RF. Um, quite a lot. <laughs> Currently our charge is only at 14 million, so we are going to have to charge that up. Um, and you can see that we still have all the upgrade keys and stuff like that. Now, if you want chaos, if you're curious about the chaotic upgrade, we'll give this just a second to come around. I'll show you what you do need for that. It is very expensive in comparison, though. Uh, not out of the question, but it is it is expensive. So, for chaotic, you need two wyvern cores, two awakened cores, two dragon eggs, and a chaotic core for each upgrade. Um, most of that stuff, the dragon eggs, are a little bit expensive. I will say that. Chaotic core, also pretty expensive. Even for us at this point, that stuff's expensive. Um, dragon eggs, of course, we are going to have to kill the ender dragon and farm him like the normal way, I guess, to get those. I don't think there's any way in this pack that comes to mind to get dragon eggs. Oh, actually, we can. Dragon hearts, eggs, and awakened cores get dragon eggs hmm interesting very very interesting um, but anyways the chaotic uh, core is very expensive because you need chaos shards which of course you can only get from killing the chaos dragon and destroying the chaos islands so that is a little bit expensive um, I am gonna try to get armor upgraded and stuff maybe before next episode we'll see Armor has uh, three upgrades, RF Capacity, Shield Capacity, and Shield Recovery. The leggings have a little bit more. They have movement speed. Boots have jump boost, and yeah, that's it. I may try to get the armor upgraded, possibly. I don't know, but we'll see. Anyways, um, before we get our bow and start using it, we're going to go ahead and make a quick way to recharge that, because right now... 
the wireless chargers are nice for upkeeping. But for something that needs millions of RF like that just in one big burst, honestly, the wireless chargers aren't going to cut it um, when it comes to that. So what we're going to do is we are just really quickly going to make ourselves a energy infuser. All right, so for these energy infusers, they're not terribly expensive. It's all basic stuff. Let's go ahead and grab that. And we'll go ahead and pop on over to here, I believe. And for right now, at least, we're going to set up our energy infuser right here. I do love the graphic on this uh, machine as well. It's one of my favorites. Um, but if we pop up here, let me grab, let me hook into our wireless crystal. Go ahead and snag that. Then we'll go ahead and link that up. Okay, so now what we can do is we can take this bow, and if we were to throw this in here, you'll notice it charges much faster. Now it does pretty much drain all the internal storage because basically what's happening is it's eating power as fast as our wireless uh, crystal can send it power. But it's, a, it's way faster than if we pulled it out. You can see that it's just slowly going up with the wireless charging. So definitely once you start getting into the Draconic stuff and especially upgraded with RF capacity, things like that, uh, the energy infuser is very, very useful for that. All right, and let's go ahead and check our bow in our GUI here. Arrow Draconic Fire is off. Arrow Base Damage, let's go ahead and bump it up to max. Um, auto Fire is off. Magnification's off. Shockwave Power is off. Arrow Velocity Modifier, we could bump this up. We'll go ahead and bump it up to 500%, and you can also do Explosion Power. If we take a look here, though, with just those upgraded, we can see that, let's see, okay, it's 274,000 RF per shot with this bow. Now, we are going to have to actually carry arrows on us. I'm hoping that they bring back the Draconic Enchantment System in the nearest future, but uh, as of right now, it's not a thing. Okay, so now, if we were to pop out here, you can see we could fire our arrows. They shoot extremely fast. Um, let's go ahead and warp over to our Ender Dragon dimension. And we'll see the difference that this bow makes. Okay, so like four or five shots, something like that. There's another one down. Yeah, so we can sit up here and we can quickly kill off all these Ender Dragons. Yeah, it's like four or five shots. And it's funny because one gets in the middle and starts doing his dragon fire, and the rest of them can't get over there. Because he's like blocking the way. Now, I would like to get a Staff of Power as well. So, needless to say, Dragon Hearts are no longer an issue at all. Got another one down. Oh, by the way, if you want to protect that block, so like maybe, you know, you actually rely on that um, matter receiver, which I guess technically I do too right now. Uh, one thing you can do is get the protection wand. And with this, you can just uh, should be able to shift, right click, and we can say protect all of this stuff. And now you'll notice, like I can't break this stuff or anything like that. Protection wand, just another um, not enough wands wand. It basically it keeps things from being able to be broken by pretty much anything. Um, it will protect from like the Ender Dragon and stuff. So just a heads up on that. If you're worried about your matter receivers or transmitters or anything like that, that is an option. So, anyways, I do know that it's about wrapping up point. Um, so I am going to end out this episode here. Next episode when we come back, one thing I do want to do is I want to make that dimensional shard dimension. Um, that will be a fully customized dimension. So if you have any questions about what all you can uh, customize within a dimension, that should be answered next episode. <clears throat> Uh, I just figured that would be the best time because there is going to be a lot of things I want to customize with that dimension and stuff. So, 
anyways, um, and then also next episode, because honestly that's not going to take too long, um, we're also going to go over one other thing with RF tools that I want to get into, and that is screens, um, because I want to finish kind of, oh, there's a dragon heart that fell down here somehow. Yeah. There's another one. So, but anyways, I'm going to be grinding up dragon hearts because, of course, there is uh, one thing I would really like to do with the dragon hearts, and that is upgrade our energy storage multiple. Um, that is definitely a big, it is very, very expensive, but doing this, it really isn't going to take all that long. So, um, but if you have any questions, as always, just let me know, and I'll do my best to get those answered for you. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already for more daily videos and um yeah i hope to see you guys next time we're probably gonna have a bunch of dragon hearts because this is like something i can just kind of afk and not pay attention and do honestly um and it's quite fun for me i like sitting around just shooting things with the bow so there is that but uh yeah so i hope you guys enjoyed it and we are probably over the next few episodes going to be doing a lot of Draconic Evolution, I imagine. Um, because honestly, we're going to be set on boss drops now. And I will say that it looks like the reactor has been added, so we will be getting into that in the very near future as well. Now that does take Chaos Shards, we are going to have to kill the Chaos Dragon. <clears throat> um, but it generates quite a bit of power as well, so... Uh, there is that. <laughs> um, but anyways, I hope to see you guys next time. Um, I'm going to quit rambling there. Um, anyways, I hope you guys have a good one. And I hope to see you guys next time. So, take care.